All right, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's get right into this. Um, the first topic here um, I want to go ahead and talk about. And I was explaining about slandering, and we talked about in the last video about Abraham's seed versus Satan's seed. This particular topic now, uh, for some, this could be offensive. Okay, so I, I want to be able to make sure I'm kind of rooted down in um, the way in which I describe what I'm trying to get across. Okay, so you have YouTube here. Okay, you have YouTube. You have different various channels. There are brethren. There are various religious channels that talk about prosperity and tithing everything you have, but not to the Father. You have, excuse me, you have um, various YouTube channels talking about um, religion as their chakra, their, um, their energy. This is not spiritual energy. This is not scriptural energy of the Holy Spirit. It's not energy. That we should be getting, a Holy Spirit is not a um, divinitive deity of a God. It's the Almighty God. It's the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Christ that lives in us because we are of him and he is of the Father. I'm describing for you here this scenario that is, is highly detrimental. Now, um, on YouTube, you have those that are of one mind, right? Because I, I truly see that now more and more each area, um, whether it be teaching, whether it be explaining and exposing the darkness, whether it be of, um, they say they're Christian, and it's all Christian based, or whether they say I'm all about love, or if, they, if someone says, an individual says, and I'm not just talking about those of the spiritual mind, I'm also talking about just channels, period, okay, so I want to start there. Or those that say, um, you know, you've got those that just want to talk about lip gloss. You get what I'm saying? Um, we have to fine-tune what we are listening to, right? That does not mean we criticize. Now, I'm not talking about darkness because the other day I had just, um, let me get my holy word here, I had left a particular um, sister and brother, their prophetic, end time prophetic um, prophecy channel. And the very next one that clicked on was someone that I thought was talking of a scriptural mind, but instead they went right into some cards with a candle. Talking about tarot cards. And I said, oh, no, 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 that's not what I mean. But because of the way the title looks, it can be deceiving to the eye. It's the same way as somebody who professes to be a priest, a high priest, is causing uh, delusional mixed messages to the masses, to the public. Now, I say this because for a while I would comment and I would, you know, I'd email someone and I'd say, you know, thank you, thank you for your informed scriptural thoughts. And we all have a different way of understanding um, someone's personality, their um, experiences, and their intellect, and the, how the Holy Spirit works with that particular person in the Word to teach or to encourage, to fellowship, to to communicate. So uh, I say this with it's I'm getting to the point where I have to be very careful and selective 
about who I do listen to and what I do listen to and what we take in because what we take in automatically gives us a memory bank. Um, it can be good or it can be bad. You know, bad or e evil or good. So, with that being said, um, there are some channels uh, that brethren really do teach about the Messiah being of love, and he is of love. They also want to make known that the Father is not of wrath. You know what I mean? He's a, he is a loving God, but he's also of wrath, and that will be slain the wicked. And Messiah will be with the sword, making his point very well known. So, as we have this walk in faith, our walk, is it doesn't stay the same. It should be growing constantly. And as it's growing, it's going to take us to new measurements and heights of what the Father wants us to understand. If you are not... You know, if you're someone that wants to understand visions or you want to receive dreams, you do have to pray about it. You have to ask the Heavenly Father... You know, Father, I, you know, and then also how much have, you know, have you repented and are you talking to him all the time? It's not so much the, a lot of, a lot of brethren can misunderstand what the repentance means. If I have a best friend, and I just, I, my best friend is the Messiah, and, and my father is the father, and that, that's first, before my children, before anything, and then there's my family, my initial family I live with. Then there are those I fellowship with. But... If I want to have that personal relationship with Messiah, I need to be interacting with him. I need to understand his character. I need to understand his love for me, how to be agape love to others. I want to understand that I will not lie to him, and he never lies to me. My association is not limited because he's of good association for me. Let me look up something here. If you want to get your word, you can if you have that. Um, but you know, you guys, it's, it's one of those you know, slim pickings out here now. There's very slim picking. It's like to me, I mean, I think for even right now, this is really not the time to be looking for someone to ha have as a mate, you know, to find a husband or a wife. It's just not the time. It's really not the time. That got me how I saw that as well, you know, um, a couple saying, We want your blessings, Mr. Pope. What about the Father's blessings? See, it's always got to be about man. That's the thing that's so wrong. It's so, 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 so wrong. So wrong. Okay, so I'm looking up here, associations. So I want to get to the scripture. See, an atonement, I want to say, too, atonement has two different means. When I made that video about atonement, you know, if you notice under atonement, the, the blood that makes atonement, of course, the day of atonement, there will be no atonement correlation. And then we have the blood moon, and many thought, you know, it's the end of the days. Um, we have to be listening to what the Father is telling, telling us in Holy Spirit and understand what Messiah is communicating to us. Okay, let's see. In just a moment. Okay, so we want to talk about Antichrist here for a second, and I'm going to come back to this area so I can get into the main topic of this this video. So I'm going to go to 1 John 2, 8. <laughs> I have so much underlying. Sometimes I, I need a new holy word again. I need a new holy word again. I just love getting into my holy word and just... <laughs> I'm going to need a new one again. Um... Okay, first John two eighteen, excuse me. Says Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Now you know, 
if I were to say, okay, the Pope is the Antichrist, and Barack Obama is the Antichrist, I understand something. It says the Antichrist have been here before, so they've already been the spirit of Antichrist, has been here on the scene. So it shouldn't shock us, okay? That's not to say that many that do research that they cannot find out, yeah, okay, this may be as in the mystery of, of what the mystery of Babylon is or whatever, that this may not be the person or it may be the person, but it's that there's already been an Antichrist spirit. Or in the last hour, what is an hour to the Heavenly Father? Think about it. So a thousand years is a day to the Father. So if you're in the last hour, you know, there might be a little time left, but not too long, but there is some time. Okay, so... Um, same thing with atonement before I get into this because this, this all correlates to there's so much pride, there's so much judgment, there's so much animosity, there's so much um, not understanding. Love also tells the truth. Love also, what? Com we confess our sins because we love the Father. We also love by admonishing that means to reprimand to restore somebody to help them get that tasteful seasoning salt again so we cannot just say oh someone doesn't love you because you've then said that the father judges he he, that he is going to judge earth and mankind because it's going it's biblical it's going to come a time so we we want to be loving but it doesn't mean we have to be fragile see being meek is not timid so we have to also help those that are a little bit, um, a little bit frightened because we do get frightened. If you're new in this truth, in this word, you know, especially if you're Hebrew uh, coming into this and so forth, you can really, really get off track and even think, you know, get into the camps and start thinking about that stuff. And that's, you don't want to do that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning, but once you've grown, you should be able to go on your own and understand because the Father teaches you anyone can receive this. Anyone is able to be close to the Messiah. If they want that, they're going to work on it. Working on the fruitages of the Spirit. And then working on bearing fruits and making sure our branches aren't withered up. And everything comes with growth. Okay? So let's go to so Leviticus 17.11. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for soul. So that blood that the Messiah sacrificed his, his life, when everything was pouring out, everything was happening to him and being crucified, that gave an atonement for our souls so that we can have that relationship so we can repent of sin, so that we can be forgiven so that we can be um the soul and and be able to even be given the the holy spirit because we're spiritual beings in heaven you see that the blood is what connects someone to the flesh but you it says in the word you still have what flesh and bone but the blood the blood is here when we're on earth here is what pumps through us and that's also, how do we say this, that's also part of not being glorious body, but that's part of being a human being, being human. And so some who are of a class of their own want to um, try to, to take others' blood or to sacrifice others in the name of their God or whatever that may be so that they can make excuses or be worshipped in the way that they're, they say they're bringing pleasing to the God, but they're not. It's not the God of the, the Almighty God. Alpha and Omega, it's, that would be Lucifer. That would be the synagogue of Satan wanting to take your blood or your children's blood or do something sadistic with it or whatever that may be, including the Planned Parenthood situation, all of that, okay, with eyes to, to see, ears to hear. We have to hear what the what the word is saying. We have to hear with our spiritual mind. Okay, so let me go back to what I was looking for here. Might be under fellowship here. This is something I wanted to I'm kind of throwing in to 
the video here. Yeah, okay, so flesh, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, Genesis 223. So um, that's another scripture you can look at as well. But let me see here. Fellowship. There's so much. You could go on and on, honestly, just in one one area of a subject. I hope you guys are having a good day. It's, it's weird. I'm a little bit calmer today. Um, I'm not solemn. But I am... <laughs> highly physically in tune to, to what I'm feeling about the morning of this world. There is going to be gnashing of teeth. Um, there's sorrow. There's a lot of birthing pains happening. You know, there's a lot going on. So, a lot going on. We have to keep encouraging each other. and We have to keep working this out um, so that we can fight the good fight and fight. Fellowship. Let's see the range. Do, 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 do. Bad association spoils useful habits, but I was connecting it to Acts 2.42. So let's go to Acts 2.42. Okay, so Acts 2.42 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer. 43, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. You see, that's, that's about Holy Spirit, but here's what happens. If you're around somebody giving doctrines and wondrous, you know, things, and they're doing the chemtrails, and they, they're up there doing blue beams, or whatever it is they're doing in the sky, that's not of the Father. That's somebody trying to copycat something. That's somebody trying to, and it's a blasphemy. So let's get right into this. So, we're going to talk about slander, okay? We're going to talk about slander. What is slander? So we've got we've got slander, slanderer, and slanderous. Um, this is really interesting. Go with me to Psalm ninety verse ten because I found something about hidden mystery Babylon as well, and kind of about the Pope in a way. When, when I when we really we got to open our minds now to this. You have to open your mind to hear and and, and understand the wisdom. You know, don't just look at a word and then, you know, if I just look, if I am guilty of this too, because if I just look at a word, I don't see the etymology, the analogy of what I'm reading. Because you, you learn the academic side, you learn the theology, but you also, and I'm not talking about scholars, I'm saying, then you have to understand what the Father is saying to you. So you get all these different, various research, and then you have to go to the Holy Word, and you have to understand how, if, if it connects, if it's wrong, it's a false doctrine. So then it's, it's not of the Father. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Psalms 90, verse 10. Alright, so we have here. So this is really interesting. See, um, this whole chapter of, verse, of chapter 90, even especially um, verse 3 and 5, they're like asleep. It's talking about plugging into the system. There's a system in this world, the beast realm system, and there's the, the truth, the word. So if you go to Psalms 90 verse 3, it says, You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. Then you go on down to 5 and it says, You carry them away like a flood. They are like, they are like a sleep. So it's not saying they're asleep. It's saying they're like a sleep in, in a fog. So I was showing you that picture. He looked like he was in a fog, the Pope, at that time. Yes, you're going to be tired, especially at, what, is he 78? You're going to be tired. But um, it's one thing to get rest. We're children of the day, right? So then we sleep at night. But we're talking about a fog, a fog. They, they turn man to destruction because they really aren't caring about climate change the way they really mean to. Excuse me. So if... They're caring about climate change. They're going to care about the animals and the fish and the hatcheries. And they're going to care about um, the vegetation, how they're feeding them. But that's not what it's about. It's about climate change as a cover-up in order to make more concrete and make fake 
well, they can recycle, okay. They can have their windmills, um, solar power, but it's more than that. It's a control to keep people populated in a little little square box of a house and stuff like that. I don't mind having something small. I'm, I'm thankful to have whatever the Heavenly Father wants me to have. See la? Eh, see la? Yeah? But that doesn't mean that I'm going to take for granted or take from the earth to get what I want. And that's what man does. keeps building higher and higher and higher. You want to go on every planet and have something everywhere. You see, and the lies, the lies start from way up. They're not from down below. They're, they're from way up telling lies, um, which causes corruption, right? Because there's already corruption. A lot of people say, oh, they've been enlightened. They've been enlightened academically. No, they just have information they've memorized. If you're just memorizing information, you don't have eyes to see. You're just memorizing. So you're good at memorizing. That's not actually knowing what the Word says. That's not understanding what the Word is telling you, everyone. It's not what, that's not what it means. So there's many that, that we're going to see fall to this. They're going to fall to this disillusionment, this deception, this false teaching, this um, talk of love. And it's and love is reproving too. It's setting things straight. Okay. Let's go to okay, so Psalms 90 verse 10. I don't want to get off track. Verse 10. It says, The days of our lives are 70 years. Okay, so you know they say man's days are about 70 years, right? Um, but it says, and if by reason of a strength of strength they are 80 years, if by strength that they're 80 years, you're not 70, you're 80. Some of us have grandparents that are over 85. Okay, so, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. That's talking about being caught up. That's talking about being caught up, being caught up, being caught up in the clouds. All right, I'm going to continue. I'm going to go into this next video about that because I want you to think about it for just a second. I'm going to upload in a minute this, this very next video about that. It's another scripture I found. I found a little hidden man in there that might bring you some joy. All right, you guys. So I'll see you in just a little bit. See you in agreement of this video, Father. We love you, Abba. All right. Shalom.